welcome back to my channel it is may it's not really may but it is time for my may wrap up one two three let's go so starting it off with my rereads i read book number five in the mediator series which is called haunted and it's by meg cabot short summarize she talks to ghosts there you go i of course as i mentioned in my previous wrap-up videos i will get into more in-depth review chat of that series uh, once i've finished all the books so as with the mediate series and as with all the previous rick ryden books <laughs> I've read, well, reread so far. The same goes for uh, these three. So these are the first three books in the Heroes of Olympus series. So we're back again with the Percy Jackson gang, uh, plus some new people hanging around. So we have book one, we have the lost hero, Hero. And we have book number two, which is The Son of Neptune. And we have book number three, which is The Mark of Athena. So, back with the Percy Jackson gang. So, it's Greek mythology all around again. Plus an added a Roman mythology, which basically the Greek and the Roman mythology is basically the same. They're just... Uh, Slight differences, like names, are not really the same, but in depth, it's basically the same thing. So, moving on to the new for me books, we have The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. As the title says, it's an invisible man. That's that's basically the gist of it. I'm not really too sure what the hell was going on in this book. I'm not sure of what the plot was, uh, what the aim of the whole thing was, because it didn't really seem like anything was going on. I mean, we're just sort of meeting this invisible man, and so he's invisible when we meet him. It doesn't, we didn't go into how he got invisible, but we sort of do, but we don't, we don't see it. And it doesn't really feel like he's trying to become visible again. Uh, yeah, I'm not really too sure what this book was about no i mean it just seemed like he was running around stark naked yelling that he was an invisible man uh, i mean why not <laughs> but what's the point and he goes on a rampage goodness knows why <sighs> Like I said, I'm not really sure what the hell was going on, but there we go. Uh, one thing I really did not like was that he experiments on his cats. That's a no-no in my book. You do not experiment on your cats. You leave your cat alone. Cats are sacred. Well, all them animals are, but cats especially. Do not experiment on cats. No, no. <laughs> well, I wouldn't mind seeing a more modern version of this. Uh, preferably without all the cat experiments. Because uh, I, I, I don't condone that. No. But experiment on yourself all you want. And if you really want to run around naked yelling you're an invisible man, go right ahead. Because we can't see you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> basically did i enjoy this book no i did not it really was not my cup of tea so kind of going along with last month's theme which was kind of new to me series that are really hyped up um yeah why not so i read 
uh, The Daughter of Smoking Bone by Lainey Taylor. So I'm not really sure how to summarise the story of it, so I'll just read this first part of the blurb. So, around the world, black handprints are appearing on doorways, scorched there by winged strangers who have crept through their slit in the sky, and in the tangled lanes of Prague, a young art student named Karu is about to be caught up in a brutal otherworldly war. So, um, the first, like, quarter, third of a book, felt like it was written in a, another language and had been translated into English. I mean, if that's true or not, I can't say. Um, and I'm not really sure what gave me that impression either, or that feeling, but it just sort of felt like it was written in a different language and had been translated. There you go. But if that changed or if I just got used to the writing of it, uh, the further along I, I read, I don't know. Not that I didn't understand it, it was just that I think the way it was, like things were described and the way they spoke. I know that they are technically speaking Czech because um, they were in Prague, but wasn't I don't I don't know so I knew nothing of this book going into it other than the little blurb bits I read during my whole of this book uh, I just know that it's a very hyped up series and I do really think that that's the way to go into books that you don't really need to know what it's about or you know detailed information going into it because I kind of like just going in blind with books yeah that's why I don't really read the blurbs either <laughs> so in this book you kind of start out thinking it's one thing and then it sort of just gets twisted around and it turns out it's something completely different which was exciting I'm intrigued to see what happens in uh, the other books so continuing off with the second book in the series I started off uh, last month uh, I read the second book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy which is Siege and Storm by Ali Bardugo So we pick up where the first book ended uh, and I, I like that in series I like when they pick up when the previous book has ended and we just sort of continue along no seven years later and this happened then i don't like that that's that's annoying so in this book we meet loads of new characters and we are brought further into the grishaverse and it sort of brings up the question of where is it all leading? Where are we going? Although there's a lot more character depth in this one and the plot is heavier than the first book, there are still things that are lacking, things that I think would have made it just a tiny bit better. I'm not saying it, w it wasn't good, but you know, everything can always be that tiny bit better. So, another book number two, continuing on from last month. <laughs> I read uh, Prodigy by Marie Lu, which is the second legend novel. Uh, so, in Prodigy, we do take up right where we left off day in June in Legend, which is, yes, we like that. So, in this one, we catch up with day in June right where we left them and they are sort of in a desperate for help kind of a situation where they they turn to the Patriots and the Patriots are a vigilante rebel group which are intent on bringing down the Republic. All in all, this was a very good second book in a series. Uh, it didn't feel like a middle book, so it didn't feel like a filler book, which is great. We do like that. We like when a book is 
actually a book and not just space filler. I mean, it's by no means perfect, but, but what book is perfect? I don't think that's that's a thing. I mean, there are great books in the world, but I don't think there are perfect books. But I will continue to read all the books and see if I can find one of those. But I am very excited to continue on with the series and see where we are headed. Because where are we headed? I want to know. Where is this going? So, I'm moving right along into a different kind of a book and also a book I'm pretty sure I paid a pound for and I was not expecting a hardback but it's been on my shelf for a while so this is not a recent thing We have A Sociable by Rebecca Harrington So, this is a novel uh, about what it means to be young, broke, dumped and scarily good at creating viral content. So this book gave me a lot of questions and a very few answers. Like, what was it about? What was the point of it? The characters were either arguing or complaining. The relationships in it is extremely toxic. Do we really need that? No. We mostly follow Eleanor, which is the main character, but it would sort of like switch off to a different character, completely random character, in the middle, <laughs> in the middle of a chapter, uh, and it was super annoying, and it also made you not really know who you were, whose point of view you were having, whose perspective you were following and uh, it was just very confusing and not a favorite of mine then the book just sort of ends like it had run out of its maximum amount of words allotted and <laughs> basically the book was just deeply unsatisfying just leave it at that so moving back into middle grade we have or <laughs> or rather i read the danger gang by tom fletcher so this is about frankie and frankie is new to town and even if he has left off his best friend where he used to live he's very excited about this new town and street and school that he's gonna go to gonna live at gonna go to but then one night there's a strange storm with green lightning and very powerful thunder <laughs> and then one by one the kids on frankie's street become a little odd a little unusual a little magical so if that little summarization of what the book is about didn't clue you in there is so much humor and just hilarity in this book it's it's just brilliant so yeah this book is targeted for a audience that's a lot younger than myself uh but i i wouldn't let that stop anyone from picking up a middle grade book especially books that are as hilarious as this one was so if you want a lot of laughs, go check it out. Actually, while you're at it, go check out Tom Fletcher's other books as well. Uh, they're just great. They're just great. Lastly, for this wrap-up, we shall end on a book two of a series I read the previous month. Because <laughs> that just seems to be the way I go. I read A Legendary by Stephanie Garber. So this is the So this is book number 2 in the Caraval series. And I like I said in my previous wrap up that if you just wanted Caraval to be like a standalone book, don't read the epilogue. Yeah, the epilogue definitely sets up the book number two in the series. This book number two in the series definitely feels like a part one of 
presumably two parts uh, of a book because there's just one more book in the series. Uh, so it's, I don't know, it's, it just sort of sets up a lot more to happen. And uh, I guess I will have to read the last book in the series to see if, you know, anything <laughs> resolves. Because uh, right now, just, just, everything's just up in the air, up in the air, yes, yes, yes. In this one, we follow mostly Tella. We have a bit here, a few bits here and there where we follow Scarlet, which we know from the previous book, but we mostly follow Tella. And Tella has her own little mission in which basically she needs to win Caraval to complete that mission. So the question of is this a game or is this real still continues on in this book. And as a reader, you are thrown back and forth and just it keeps you guessing, is what I'm trying to say. So for this book, because it doesn't really have an ending, which I hope comes in book number three, but we shall see. I don't know yet. Um, so although I much prefer the setting of this second book, because uh, we're in a new place, uh, I think I prefer the plots of the first book, uh, Caraval, a lot more but we shall see what book number three has to say because I feel like I need to read book number three because before I can sort of give a like good evaluation of book number two if I I don't know something like that. I will say that I much prefer Tellus' character because she's a lot more go-getter uh, than I did Scarlet in book one. So that is all for this uh, crap wrap-up. I'm gonna make that a thing now. That's all for this wrap-up. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe because it really helps me out and makes me happy. <laughs> I like being happy uh, and I shall see you next time. Uh, bye bye.